We're back now with the acting director of U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, or USCIS, Ken Cuccinelli. His agency is part of Homeland Security, and it manages the processing of visas, asylum claims, and applications for citizenship. Good morning. Good to be with you, Mark. You were obviously directly impacted at your agency by the Supreme Court decision to Absolutely. uphold yeah. the ability to enforce these new restrictions on being able to claim asylum. What is the practical impact on the ground, and when will it be felt? So uh, it's already being felt. Uh, it isn't. It wasn't from zero to a hundred as soon as the Supreme Court ruled. We didn't know their timing, uh, but I can tell you that I spoke with Mark Morgan and Matt Albans, the head of the other two immigration agencies, uh, on Friday, and we will be working closely with the Department of Justice, where the immigration judges sit, and um, we're ramping this up as quickly as we can logistically. We'll we'll do it in the places where we have the logistics in place fastest first and then move it all the way across the border but this will be measured in days not weeks so to explain it, this restricts the ability of people to claim asylum if they haven't first tried to claim asylum and been denied in a country they were they passing through, through right. en route to the united states but claiming asylum is a legal channel of asylum so of trying to immigrate so if you're cutting off that legal channel aren't you just going to push people towards illegal immigration? Well, most of the people coming in that are claiming asylum on the southern border are coming in illegally already. But if they're crossing illegally but still declaring asylum, they're going through the legal channel if they're declaring themselves to a border patrol officer. Right. And so we have different rules in different places. I don't think a lot of people realize this, but the northern border, uh, we have an agreement with Canada where you can claim asylum in either Canada or the United States, but not both under any circumstances. It's actually a more restrictive arrangement than we have now on the southern border. So uh, the, the circumstances that we face on our southern border are still crisis circumstances and uh, we have a 335,000 asylum case backlog which I take very seriously and it has creeped up while I've been here um, despite us throwing more and more resources at trying to drive it down, there are legitimate asylum claims in there. Mm -hmm. Some of them have been waiting over two years, and we take very seriously the need to get to those people. Unfortunately, this system is clogged up with a lot of fraudulent claims. But as you just said, sometimes there are very legitimate claims of asylum, oh, yeah, fear for your life. And that is where the controversy is, not just around the legality, but the morality of it. I mean, Ronald Reagan talked about this country as a shining city on the hill, and you were building a big moat around it. Well, that's not how we view it, obviously. But, um, I mean, at the same time, my agency is, uh, you know, creating more citizens than you've seen in years. We have with a five-year high last year, and we'll break that again this year. But this so, is tens of thousands yes, of people just who will not be able to claim okay, asylum. Okay, but you just described us as trying to build a moat around it. I'm pointing out that in the legal process, we're moving along at a good clip. We have a crisis at the southern border, and this is just one of the many responses we've had. The president has been very clear about the need to be aggressive on the border, and that's exactly what we're doing. So are you essentially arguing that this is going to be a deterrent, where people just won't even try to come? Because uh, there asi will, claiming there asylum be. is illegal. Means yes, of Margaret, I understand, and your point is an excellent one. It will be a deterrent for some people, um, particularly those who were going to be coming and claiming what are clearly false asylum claims. People, and remember, asylum is about safety. We do want people right. to be safe. Um, the, and the reality is America is the most generous country in the world on this front. But we have to deal with the crisis we're facing down there. This will be a deterrent to some coming who are making particularly false claims. Very quickly on that note, the Bahamas was just slammed with a horrific hurricane. Dorian, yes. Why change it and make it harder for people to flee to this country this past Monday by now requiring visas? There's a lot of good reasons people wouldn't have their paperwork. Uh, well, CBP has actually extended itself out into the Bahamas, which they I don't ever remember them doing before. We're actually making this a lot more accommodationist. So realize that the northern two islands were hit. Grand Bahama has electricity and the basics back. The Bahamas is a perfectly legitimate country capable of taking care of their own. We rushed resources in, mm -hmm. whether it was from USAID or the Coast Guard, who were downright heroic in there. Mm -hmm. And Border Patrol assets were moved in there as well to make hundreds of saves. I'm, uh, uh, I'm, I appreciate everything you're saying. I'm running out of time. I'm being told, so I got to <laughs> leave understand. it there. Unfortunately, we're going to be right back.